The president has called the combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin to be a game changing during this pandemic when people are clinging to any sort of hope. In the past few days, though, a few people have died trying to take these drugs. One was an Arizona man who thought aquarium cleaner with the same name was the antiviral drug. Today, a new clinical trial is underway studying this drug combination in New York. Nine health expert Dr. Pyle Coley joins us now. So what can you tell us about this combination? Like why are these two drugs in particular being tested? Does it work? Yeah, so Alex, azithromycin is a drug that we commonly use to treat bacterial pneumonia, also known as ZPAC. And hydroxychloroquine is a derivative of chloroquine, which was used to treat malaria originally, but now more recently is FDA approved for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. And we really got excited about these drugs because in the test tube, they actually prevented the viral particles from replicating. And then we had some early data out of France and then out of China that showed us that in human beings, who take these drugs that are infected with the novel coronavirus, they actually have a decrease in their viral load, which is the number of viral particles in their blood and their respiratory secretions. But I really cannot emphasize enough how preliminary anecdotal and early this data is. So this is not randomized data, which is what we as doctors consider the best high quality data out there. This is more kind of like confounded data. So it's, it's almost like case reports telling us that this may work, but what it tells us is that these drugs need to be explored further and it's nothing we can hang our hat upon at this time. So you would say the current recommendation is we've got to wait before taking this stuff. Yeah, and you know, I really want to drive home that message because all across the world, um, the recommendations are really mainly that people who are very, very ill at kind of the, the final stages of the disease, almost like a Hail Mary, can be considered candidates for this drug. And here in the United States, they're actually, the WHO says it's a case by case basis for, or for critically ill patients. And the CDC says only for hospitalized patients. So this combination is not for people who are trying to prevent the infection. It's certainly not for people who think they may have been exposed to the infection. And you know, the drugs carry real risks. So hydroxychloroquine can cause cardiac arrhythmias uh, like torsade de point, and azithromycin can cause similar types of arrhythmias. They can cause kidney damage, lung damage, seizures. And the second part of it is that if we start using these drugs for something that we don't even know works, we're actually gonna deprive people who need them for their lupus, their rheumatoid arthritis of them, and we're seeing drug shortages. Makes sense. Before you go, Dr. Coley, I just wanted to ask you, you know, whenever you go to Target or a grocery store and you go down the medicine aisle, all of the cold medicine is wiped out. There's nothing there. I mean, is that smart? Is that something we should be taking if we, you know, feel like we have symptoms that could possibly be related to COVID-19? Yeah, so cold medicine is only for symptomatic relief. So it's not going to make the duration of the illness shorter. It's not going to actually fight the viral infection. So it's really only to make you feel better. So, you know, just like we don't really stock up on cold medicine for things like the flu, I don't think we necessarily need to stockpile it. It might be nice to have something on hand if we do get sick and we have a fever and we want to take some Tylenol for it, but it's, it's not a good idea to clean out those shelves because again, all we're doing is kind of creating downstream effects for people who need them and also impacting our economy. And some of these drug prices are going to start to go up if we don't stop the behavior. Yeah, that is a very good point. I'll, okay, Dr. Coley, thank you so much for your insight. As always, we're so glad to have you here. I know you guys probably have more questions about COVID-19, and that answer very well could already be on our Frequently Asked Questions story. It's already up on the 9 News app. You can also find info on keeping yourself healthy and what to do if you think that you are sick right now. It's all on 9news.com for you.